today we are going to make a wedding invite. Now it's not so much about the wedding invite and I'm actually going to do a mini series on things that you can do for your wedding or to help others with weddings. But today it's more about the process. So we're going to cut, we're going to score, we're going to write and we're going to print as well. So we've got lots of different processes in there. And I just kind of wanted to go through it with you. So this is the kind of back of our invite. Now I've got this from a Etsy file, which I've paid for, but you can make them and we will look into making them ourselves, but you can get them from lots and lots of websites. And there's some beautiful ones out there. So the first thing I want to do with this is actually put my score lines in. So I'm going to go to shapes and I'm going to grab a score line. And the first thing I'm going to do is just bring it over and size it up. And I'm just going to make it longer so it sits on the entirety of the card. And then I'm going to go in and duplicate it. And I'm just going to place each score lines where I'm happy with. Now, I don't want them too close to the cut because you will struggle to uh, turn it over there and you'll, you'll struggle to fold it. So we want it to have quite a nice gap, but obviously we don't want it to be too far across the card. And we want them to be even as well. So you can see I've got my text already made up. Now this is Samantha, this is Chasing Hearts, and this is Samantha as well. And if you don't know how to ungroup your letters and then move them together and weld them, please do go and look at our previous tutorial on this. It's vital that you do this with cursive text. It will make it look so much neater. So the next thing I'm going to do is go and grab a shape and I just want to grab a square and I'm just going to bring my square over and I'm going to unlock it and I'm just going to bring it to the size that I want. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight all, I'm going to go to a line and I'm going to centre it. And I don't need to do anything with it, it's just for my own visual kind of looking so that I can see that that is exactly how I want it. I'm then going to go in and duplicate it and I'm also going to change the colour of the duplicate. And again, I'm going to go in, I'm going to unlock and I'm just going to reduce the size slightly. And again, I can go in, highlight, align, and center. And again, it's just so that I can visually see what it's going to look like. So I'm just going to go in and hide my attached layer. And I'm also going to hide my gray square because I don't need that for the time being. And I'm then going to go in and first of all, I need to arrange to front on each of these. And then I can go in and work out where I want them to be on my paper or my card, whatever I'm going to use. And I'm just going to go in and work out how I want them to sit. So the next thing I'm going to do is again, I'm going to highlight all, I'm going to align and I'm going to center horizontally. So this will allow them to stay where they are, but it will center them within the whole square, which is what we want. I'm then going to go to my text. Now, I'm going to print this out, but I'm going to write the next piece of text. And I'm actually going to write using my embossing pen. And I'm then going to use embossing powder. Now, the embossing pens are quite thick. And you'll find that when you load uh, fonts onto your computer, they draw or write with double lines and when you're using thick pens like embossing pens it can end up in just a big mess so for things like this where I'm using thicker pens I go and use design space fonts and the reason I use design space fonts is if you go to filter you'll see there's a writing filter and this gives you actual writing fonts and these will write as one line nice and thin. So it's great for when you're using thicker pens. You can see that I've used the font Adelaide and I'm just going to go to advanced and ungroup to letters. 
And this will then allow me to overlap each letter so that it has that really lovely cursive look to it. So I've also got a heart here. So if I click on that and come over here and I turn it from a cut to a right, you'll then see it becomes an outline. And I'm then able to add it onto the end of my text. So the next thing is I'm going to highlight and you'll see that the weld doesn't come up because we are writing this and not cutting it it won't allow us to weld and actually we don't need to weld because we're writing but we are going to attach them so the next thing I want to do is just go and grab an image so I'm going to go to images and I think I want a bird so I'm just going to type in bird and I'm going to search and you can filter it so I'm going to do an access image today and I can then go through and have a look at all the different birds so I've chosen this bird image, which is already set as a print, but it doesn't matter because even if it was an image, we're going to follow the same steps. So I'm just going to remove it for a second. I'm going to go in and I'm going to change the color of my text. Now I need to do this before I turn my text into a print because it won't allow me to do it once I've flattened it. So I need to change the color first. So I've changed the colour and then I just want to bring my bird over and make sure that I'm happy with it. And I'm going to go in and once again I'm going to centre horizontally and then I can just work out my wording here. So I'm then going to remove this wording because I'm going to write it. Now with all this I want it to print so I'm just going to highlight and I'm going to flatten and this will then have it as a print and it's going to cut it as well but it will only cut the square it won't cut the image which is exactly what we want we want the image and the words to print out and then we want the square to cut out or the rectangle so with my writing I'm then going to arrange and move to front and I'm just going to place it where I want it. I'm then going to highlight all and I'm going to attach. So we've flattened our print and we've attached our writing text. So you can see I've now brought everything back and this is what it's going to look like. So I'm just going to highlight all and you can see the width is set at 10 and that's about right for what I want. So I can now go to make it. So you can see with this one, it says print, draw and cut. This one is a cut and this one is a score and cut. So we can then go to continue. So I've chosen my maker today and when I'm actually cutting, I'm going to take you through my settings that I'm using. But for now, we're going to send to printer. So I'm just going to click send to printer. I can choose my printer that I want to send it to. Now, you've got the option to have the bleed on or off. Now, because we've flattened everything, we don't need to worry about the bleed. I'm going to switch it off because I normally have it off. So I'm now going to go and send it to the printer. So you can see that my card has now printed out. This is just a card stock and you'll see the black line around. And this is our registration mark for our print and cut. And when I put it in the machine, you'll see the little light comes on and that's the machine scanning for these registration marks. Now when it cuts out, we won't see this, but it's just to help the machine to know where it needs to cut. So I've got a blue mat here, so I'm just going to place my card onto my blue mat. And I'm just going to go in with my scraper and make sure that that's fully adhered to my mat. So I've got my emboss it pen here. This is the Ranger ones and these fit in the machine absolutely perfectly. And then I've got my embossing powder as well. And you can get these from Amazon, eBay, any good sort of stamp shop you'll be able to get them from, any good craft shop you'll be able to get them from as well. So Design Space is telling us we need to load our pen into our A-clamp. I've currently got my scorer in there. 
So I'm just going to remove that and then just going to very gently push my pen in and you'll hear it click and you can then close up your clamp. So I've got my cut setting to medium cardstock. The first thing it's going to do is the little light's going to come on here and it's going to scan for the registration marks. It's then going to write and it's then going to cut. Now you have to be quite quick with the writing side of it. The embossing ink dries really quickly so you do want to work quite fast. If it's quite a detailed design I always write, then it will cut, and then straight away, without removing my mat, I'll press my Cricut again, and it will then start writing. As soon as the writing has stopped, I'll pause the machine and I'll unload it. But we won't need to do that today, we'll only need to write once, because the writing is quite quick, and then it will go straight into its cut. So you can see it's cut out, so I'm going to straight ahead go and remove my card. And I'm then gently going to remove this card. And I'm immediately going to go in with my embossing powder. And you do want to be really quick about it because you don't want your embossing ink to dry up. Once it's on there, it's absolutely fine, but you do want to work quite quickly. You can then go in and remove any excess. Now you don't want to run your finger across it because you'll just wipe away the embossing powder, but just give it a nice tap and you'll blow it all away in a second anyway. So I've got my heat embossing gun here, and again, you can pick these up, Amazon, eBay, any good craft shop. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it on, and I'm just going to place it above my embossing powder. And you'll see it starts to almost liquidise, and you'll see as it changes. Now, you don't want to go in too close, but you don't want to be too far either. So I normally just rest my hand on my surface and I naturally just then place my embossing gun and this works really well. And you can see how the embossing powder has now melted into this gorgeous sheen. You can then go in and just brush away any excess powder. So I've got some Cricut Pearl Paper here and this is from the Pastel set. And this is going to look really lovely and there is a cut setting for it in Design Space and it's just under Pearl Paper. So this is the Cricut foil poster board and again this is from the pastel set. Now again there is a setting for this under foil poster board and this is the setting I'm going to cut on and again I'm using my blue mat. Now it's slightly different with this. You'll see that it's got this beautiful sheen to it and you'll find that with the holographic vinyls, uh, the opal vinyls, anything that's got a really beautiful sheen to it if you go in with your scraper, you are going to scrape the surface of this. So there's two ways around this. The first way is to get a scraper and just put some felt on it and you can then very gently just go in and scrape that onto your mat and you're not going to damage the surface of your foil. Or the other option is I've got my fabric brayer here and you can use anything as long as it hasn't got a huge amount of stick to it and it's just going to gently roll her across you can use this as well and it works really well and it won't scrape your surface and as I say if you use a normal scraper you're going to end up with lots of scratch marks which you don't want. My design space is telling me I need to put my scoring tool in so I'm just going to add it to my A clamp and just push down and then I can close it up. I can then load my machine with my mat. <laughs> 
can see it's now scoring first. And then it's going to go in and do its cut. that it's scored and it's cut so I'm going to remove it now I find the best way with this because the card will curl quite easily so you want to turn your mat over and you then want to gently remove your mat now you don't want to bend your mat too far back because they do have a tendency to snap sometimes so you do want to be quite gentle with it but if you just take your time you'll see that it very easily just comes away and then we haven't bent our foil board as well so we can then use the excess so I've got this Cricut scraper tool that I use and I'm just going to very very gently go in and start removing my card from my mat and you'll see that all the cut bits start coming out which is absolutely fine it's less work for us to do in a minute but we're just going to take our time and very gently start lifting it up so I've now got my weeding tool and I just go through and I just poke through the bits that haven't come away and they should have cut beautifully so you're literally just going to poke through with your weeding tool to remove them so you can see that I've now removed all my pieces so I'm going to start working on the score line so I'm just going to very gently start pinching the score line just so that I can gently fold it over and I just want to make sure that I stick to my score line and I like to go in with my fingers and just press down a few times just so I can get that nice crisp fold I can then go in and do the other side you can see when we then turn it over we've got two really lovely folds and the card then looks absolutely beautiful so I've got my pearl paper and I've got my printed and embossed piece. So I've got some art glitter glue here. Now you can use Mod Podge. I'm just going to use this today because it's got the small nozzle. So I'm just going to place some glue on my printed card. Just enough for it to nicely stick. And I'm then going to place it on my pearl paper. And I then just put a heavy book on that for five minutes just so that it sits nice and flat. So once that's nice and dry I can then go in with my art glitter glue and again I'm going to put the glue onto the pearl paper. And again you don't need a huge amount of this. I tend to go overboard with glue, I don't know why, it must be a childhood thing. And I'm then going to place it on my card. And again, I'm going to put a book on that for about five minutes just to really make sure that it's nice and adhered.